In this adventure, your grandfather has been transported back to the beginning of the 19th century, 1811 to be precise. Here near the seaside town of Lyme Regis, a young girl called Mary Anning is exploring the rugged Jurassic coast with her brother Joseph. They're down here every day, explains your grandfather, trying to find things they can sell to make a little extra money for the family. We're looking for these, replies Joseph, holding up a rather strange looking stone. Most people don't know what they are, adds Mary. They call them snake's tails or devil's fingers. But I think they are the remains of ancient animals. Mary is quite right. These are not stones, but the fossilized remains of prehistoric creatures. Can you help find the fossils buried in the cliff? Well done, you've got quite a haul. But it's that odd looking skull that Joseph spotted that will change the course of science. Although the scientists of the time have their theories about amazing creatures that might have roamed the earth long before humans, they have no real evidence yet of dinosaurs or prehistoric sea creatures. Until this particular discovery of a fossilized skull remarks Grandfather. It looks a bit like a crocodile. In the weeks that follow, 12-year-old Mary goes back to the same spot every day and painstakingly pieces together the skeleton of the mystery creature. Can you put the last remaining pieces of the skeleton into the right place? This is a major scientific discovery, exclaims your grandfather. And very soon the skeleton that Mary has pieced together is attracting interest from scientists across Britain. I'll buy that, shouts the lord of the local manor. And Mary sells it to him for 23 pounds. A great deal of money for the daughter of a carpenter. Eight years later, it is then sold on to the British Museum, where it is officially identified as an ichthyosaur, a prehistoric sea reptile from the time of the dinosaurs. Although Mary is not scientifically trained, she continues to teach herself about these prehistoric creatures and, in time, builds up a reputation as an expert in the subject. Over the next few years, she goes on to uncover many more ichthyosaur skeletons, pterosaurs, and fossilized plesiosaur bones, helping to establish a much better picture of the creatures that existed millions of years ago. But there are a number of fossils that Mary has uncovered which continue to baffle her. Can you guess what this fossil is the remains of? That's right, Mary's found many strangely shaped fossils which she eventually concludes are fossilized poo. They're called coprolites, to give them their proper scientific name, says Grandfather. Mary Anning struggled to get the recognition she deserved during her lifetime, mostly because she was a woman when the majority of paleontologists were men. But in 2010, 163 years after her death, she finally got the recognition due to her. When the Royal Society formally recognized the carpenter's daughter in a list of the 10 British women who have most influenced the history of science. And about time too, chips in grandfather. Mary Anning made lots of sketches of the prehistoric creatures that were discovered on the Jurassic coast. But even now, we still don't know the colour of their skin. Choose a scene to colour in and send your vision of what these prehistoric creatures looked like to your grandfather.